Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. Another new addition to Anime Studio 10 is the separate exporter. Now what this means is when you export out an animation, a separate application will launch to export your sequence out. And this has many different benefits. So to demonstrate, let's open up here a file. You can see I just have a standard little file here of a animation of a man talking. I have another one here ready to go as well. You can see here, just kind of plays out and everything is all good to go and set. So I'll start with this file and I'll go to file export animation or command E or control E if you're on Windows and that should seem familiar for you longtime users out there just going to export animation. So you go through the process, you pick your output format, your frames and all that. You need to find a destination. I'll just put it on the desktop for right now and click save and it'll start exporting out. Now what you'll notice now if you look up here I'm now in what's called the Anime Studio Exporter. I'm not actually in Anime Studio. And if you look at that on the dock, you can see it's a separate application. There's my exporter. There is Anime Studio. So what does this mean? Well, I can let this run and I can continue then to work in Anime Studio. I could actually make changes to this if I wanted to. I could go in and open up another document. I could even, if I wanted to, See here, go to File and Export Animation, click OK, go to Desktop, hit Save, and render out two files at once. You can see now that there are two exporters running along with Anime Studio. And what will happen here is these exporters take a lower priority. So let's say you're working on something else and you have some pretty extensive stuff going on that's taking up your computer's power. Well, those exporters will then take a back seat and they will become a lower priority. They'll still export, but they won't suck up all of your memory or your resources on your computer. And while you can make changes to the documents you are exporting because they're essentially copied, just make sure that you don't make changes to any of the external files that you may be using, such as images or audio files or video files and so on, because that can then mess with the exporter. So you have that going on. The same applies with your batch processor. That is also a separate application. So here, let me just quit these really quick here. We can stop the renders on these. Just like that. And just click OK here. These are just telling me they weren't complete. And then I can go to File batch export. So from here we have the Holyfield animation here. We could add another one. Let me just jump in here and I'll just grab another one like that. And you can hit start. Hit OK. What will happen here is you can see the Anime Studio exporter kicks in. It's a separate application and it is doing its thing. So as you can see, it works well. You have your percentage here. And basically, it allows you to free up resources and get more done while Anime Studio does all the heavy lifting for exporting in the background. So that is really cool. We can just quit out of that again since uh, we need to show you something else here. Now, version 10 also has what is called a render cache. Now, you may have heard of such a thing with other programs. What this does is it essentially saves screenshots of your previews, both previewing your animations, which is new to version 10, as well as previewing images when you, for instance, render out a frame. So for instance, let's just render out this frame we have going on right here. I can go up to File, Preview, or Command R or Control R if you're on Windows. So we can just preview this really quick. Now. 
What will happen is you'll have a render cache folder created when you set up your content folder. Now, if you haven't set up your content folder, when you go to click render cache here on the bottom, you will have to go through the steps of setting up that content folder. That's for your library, your custom brushes, and all of that, and now as well as your render cache. But once that's set up, when you click on render cache, you'll be brought to that folder. And basically, again, it's in your content folder. For me, I just put it right in here, my AS10 library, and then I have the Anime Studio Pro folder, render cache right here. And here is the file I just rendered out. And then I can come down here, and here's another one I rendered out before as well. So what you could do, and this is what's kind of useful in this case, let's just come back here and close out of this. Let's say also on that frame, I'm on frame 24. I'm like, well, you know, I kind of want to adjust something here. So I could come in here and do some adjustments. I wanted to change some things with this. I want him to kind of go like this or something like that. Now I render that frame out again and go to render cache. You can see now that there are actually two frames that are the same, frame 24, but it's render one and two. What's useful about this is now you can reference the changes of these frames. So I could double click look at this one, be like, okay, you know, that's kind of how it uh, looks. And then come back here and like, okay, now what did I change? You know, you can kind of put them side by side and really see what you changed here, which can make referencing the history of your project a lot easier. And I mean, you don't have to do that just for similar frames. You could go to any frame here, really render it out and then it's saved in the cache. So that can be very useful. Now the same applies when you are rendering out your previews. So in order to do that, we can just go to File, Preview Animation, and we do have a tutorial on this as well if you're more interested specifically in this feature. But we go to Preview Animation, we can see it playing out here, and we hit Stop, and then we have a preview of it. And you can see it plays it at full frames. And what's useful about this is you can create a preview without having to commit to a full render, basically. So we can then go back here to the cache. Let me just go in here. And you can see now the MP4 file has been saved right there. You can double click, and there it is. So now, while your frames will continue to kind of add up. Let's say you keep rendering out frame 24, you know, you'll get multiple copies of that. The same won't happen when you do your previews for your animations. So if I continue to preview here, let's do it again. You know, we make another copy of that. Go back into here. You can see that it actually overrides that previous one. And the reason for that is because video files can get quite big. And so Anime Studio basically limits one video of that sequence at a time. And there is also a limit to how many files you can have in the render cache. The default is 100. If you want to change that, you can go to Anime Studio and then Preferences. Here, in the Options tab at the bottom, you can see it says max render cache size 100. Well, you could change that to 1000 if you want that many temporary files stored in your cache. And again, these are temp files. And if you don't want to, you know, risk getting too many files in there or bloating up the folder, you could then just move out whatever files you want into a safer location and then just have it override the files as you dictate, you know, with your movies and your file limit here but that is up to you. But anyway, that is a little bit about the new rendering features in Anime Studio. I think it's gonna make a big difference when it comes to saving time with exporting and previewing your animations. If you would like more information on Anime Studio, you can visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching guys, and we will see you next time.